Hey, what's up guys? My name is Jacob Russell and I am the executive pastor here at the Chapel KC. Thank you for joining us this morning. I'm excited. Today, we're gonna talk about revival. And so that's probably a term you've heard at some point or another. Um, maybe in your end, you've, you've heard it more in response to like the overall church. Um, and we'll touch on that today. But for this morning, we're gonna give just a, a really brief, concise definition, nothing too crazy. It's simple, bring back to life to spark a new fire and a new hunger for the things of God. And i um, not sure if you guys have watched the news lately, but we're due. It's about time. It's about time. So let's look at what the word says. James 4, 8 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. So what does that mean? Well, that, that means we need to pursue God like never before. And to look a little bit deeper, it means the time of protecting sin and abusing grace is gone. You can't step into a revival with protected sin that you and God are both well aware of that you're not gonna call out and do anything about. And so that's where it's up to us. We have to step up. But the cool thing about it is when we do, God always responds. Isaiah 57, 15 says, for this is what the high and exalted one says, he who lives forever, whose name is holy. I live in a high and holy place, but also with the one who is contrite and lowly in spirit to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite. That's pretty cool to me because God's talking about the lowly in spirit and the broken. He's not looking for the ones who have it put together on Sundays or those whose social media accounts look like they are all about Jesus. That's not what we're talking about. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about a heart. He cares more about your heart than your current situation. And that's why we have an opportunity and access to get to that point, to step into revival, to light a fire in our lives. And we do that through repentance. It's a free gift. And then through that, we can maintain an active life in and through His presence by reestablishing God's will as our priority. But it starts with us. We have to start with us. If we want revival, in our lives, in our church, and in our city, it starts with you and me. It's time to be honest with ourselves, uh, and it's time to start being honest about the sin in our lives. So that's my challenge to you today. Pray, write a list, be honest with yourself and with God about the things you've been struggling with, or maybe you've been protecting, or maybe it's something you've intended to get to for a while, but then a while's turned into two or three years, and now it's kind of just snowballed. And, and why you may not have meant to get to this point, you are, and here's where we are. And if you be honest with God and humble with God, and if you present your heart broken and contrite to Him, He can rebuild it stronger and better than ever before. And then when you have your heart rebuilt on foundation of Scripture and truth, that revival can take hold like wildfire and spread through your life, through your family, through your influence, and then through our city. But if we want revival in our lives and in Kansas City, guys, it starts with you and it starts with me and it has to start today. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as I come before you, we just thank you, Father. You're so good. You're so glorious. You're so wonderful. We praise you, Father. Thank you for your presence in our lives. You're the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And because of that, Father, we know that we can trust and have faith in you. We know that you're a good God. You're not a man that you should lie. So when you say that you'll meet us where we're at, you mean that. So Father, I pray that anybody watching this today, anybody listening to this today, feels a tug in their spirit, a little bit of conviction, Lord, for the things that, that they know they need to clean up, but maybe they haven't yet. Father, help them return to a place of repentance to keep their proximity with you close, Father, to keep the access with you open. Father, because then through that, when you restore our lives and you restore our hearts around your truths, we can watch revival take out. And that's truly the goal. That's what we want today is revival in our lives and in Kansas City, because we live in a world right now that needs truth now more than ever. We live in a world in a society that follows emotions and is, is making permanent decisions that affect lives for generations based on how they feel in the moment. And Father, we know that emotion is fleeting and that the only anchor we have in a world and a society like today is scripture and it's a relationship with you and it's the Holy Spirit having access to lead, cleanse and guide our lives, Father. So I pray today that you continue to stir up our hearts, Father. Allow us to, to get insight, discernment, Father, some wisdom in some areas we need to clean it up. 
Father, let us set new boundaries. Let us seek accountability. Let us do exactly what scripture says to keep a pure and holy life with an active presence in it. Help us to see the things we need to do, take the steps to do them. And I know you'll meet us where we're at today, Father. We thank you for the revival that's going to take place in our lives. We thank you for the impact you're going to make for the kingdom. And we thank you for the Chapel KC and the people that call this church home and the fresh fire you're starting in their lives right now, this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, we love you guys. Have a great day. Peace.